is the 2023 recruiting class of West Virginia on course to be the best in school history? Let's talk about it. What is up, college sports fans and fellow members of Mountaineer Nation? This is Coos. Welcome in to yet another edition of Coos's Corner. Sit back, make yourself at home, and let me pour you out a shot of top-shelf college football content. If you like that kind of content, especially if you're a West Virginia fan, you need to hit that red subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of all future videos. Hit the thumbs up button if you like this specific video. And please, if you like this video and this content, please share it out with your friends. Let them know about Kuz's Corner because if you like it, there's a good chance they will too. If you want to support my show financially, you can do so by hitting the join button right underneath this video. There's many perks that go along with being a member. You can check those out. And also, I now have a merch store. Go check out my merch store. The link's in the description box. You can buy t-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, travel mugs, mouse pads, stickers. You name it, I've got it. Go check it out and help me spread the Coos's Corner brand wherever you go. Now let's get on with the show. In a recent press conference, Neil Brown talked about how this 2023 class so far was shaping up to be even better than the 2022 class, which happened to be one of the best in school history. Is that true? Well, so far, we've got six commitments, and I'm going to break down each commitment and give you a little bit about each player and give you my opinion on what they need, what they're great at and what they need to work on. And then I'm going to ask you to let me know in the comment section what do you think about this class so far and which player are you most excited about. Let's get started. As of right now, West Virginia is ranked 22nd nationally, according to 24-7 Sports, for the 2023 class. That's pretty good. We all know that's going to change as we get later into the year. But to be 22nd right now in the nation is, is sitting pretty, pretty good for West Virginia. Now, the first player I want to go over in this class, now let's keep in mind, first off, let me preface it by saying every recruit so far is listed as a three-star at 24-7 Sports. That could change. There's one or two of these gentlemen that might go up to four stars before the end of their senior seasons. But the first one on the list that I want to go over is defensive lineman Cameron Jackson. He's out of Spartanburg High School in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He, he's six foot four, 300 pounds, just a really big body. He's probably going to get even bigger if he hasn't already. He lines up most of the time as a zero technique or a one technique, but he's also played the three in high school. My expectations are at West Virginia. He'll probably play the nose tackle position, which is that zero or that one technique. He's probably going to be too big and not quite fast enough to be a pass rusher, in my opinion. But he's long at, with that 6'4 frame. He's big at 300 pounds. And like I said, he'll probably put even more weight on. He has a high motor. He doesn't quit. He's got decent quickness for his size. Now, he's not he's not been being recruited heavily. I didn't see where he had any other offers so far, at least not listed on the 24-7 website. But the good thing is West Virginia has been good about finding these diamonds and rough guys that are under-recruited. I think this might be another one of those guys. Throughout his senior season, if he has a really good season, there will probably be more schools on him. But hopefully by West Virginia being the first one to make an offer, he will stick to his commitment, and that should give West Virginia an advantage. The next one on the list is the only quarterback that they have committed so far for the 2023 class, and that's Raheem Jeter. Jeter also attends Spartanburg High School in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He stands six foot three, 220 pounds, so he's a big body. He's a pass-first quarterback, so he should work well in Graham Harrell's system. He hails offers also from Missouri, Kentucky, Auburn, Virginia Tech, Georgia, and others. So as you can see, there's a lot of Power 5 schools on his offer list, including some SEC schools. The one thing in watching film on this young man, I noticed a few things. Number one, he's really accurate with the football. He gets the ball where it needs to go, and he gets it there when it needs to be there. So he's, he has good timing with his receivers. I've noticed he times his footwork really well based on the pattern the receiver's running, so he's good at that. And also with his size, He's good at avoiding pressure when he needs to. Now, he's, he's not lightning fast, but he is pretty fast for his size. And he's hard to bring down, so he's going to be hard to tackle and hard to sack. Now, going back to his footwork again, his footwork's pretty decent when he's not under pressure. But what, what I've noticed is when he's under pressure and he's getting ready to get hit, as he's releasing the football, he has a tendency to leave his feet if he has pressure coming. And that worries me a little bit because I, I, I fear that that will cause some accuracy issues as he gets to a higher level. But I'm confident that Graham Harrell and his staff will work with him on that and get that under control. And one more thing, in my opinion, that he needs to work on is his delivery. I think his delivery is a little bit too long. 
I think he needs to shorten it just a little bit and get rid of that ball a little faster. Keep in mind, this is all my opinion. I'm not a professional scout, but just from all the football I've watched over the years and from playing football, I'm giving you my opinion. Next one on the list is a running back, Jaheim White, out of William Penn High School in York, Pennsylvania. He stands 5 foot 9 inches tall, weighs 180 pounds. Now, so far, other than West Virginia, his only two offers are from Bowling Green and Old Dominion, two non-Power 5 programs. But I'm not worried about that, and here's why. I think this young man is under the radar. And I think by the time he gets through his senior season, he's going to have a lot more schools on his offer list. Now, will that cause us to lose it, lose this young man? I don't. Hopefully not, since we were the first Power 5 program to offer him. I feel like that gives us a leg up on anyone else. But I do think he's under the radar, and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, you watch his film and you look at his numbers. He averaged 13 yards a carry in high school. He sees a hole, boom, he hits it. He's quick, really quick. He runs a 4.4 40-yard dash. So he's really fast. To put that in perspective, Lady Brown ran a 4.7 at the NFL Combine. He was the slowest back at the NFL Combine. So this young man is three-tenths of a second faster than Lady Brown. And in a 40-yard span, that's moving. Now, despite his small frame, he's really strong. He act, Before going into his junior year, he was bench pressing 285 pounds. To be 5'9", 180 and be benching 285 is, is remarkable. And you know he's going to get even stronger with another year in his high school weight program. And then you put him in the Mike Joseph's weight program at West Virginia, he will be a beast. So you take his 4-4 speed, combine that with his strength and his ability to hit a hole and his quickness, I think this young man can be a really good running back, and I think he's a diamond in the rough that this program has been able to find. So I really like this young man. Now the next one on the list, first of two defensive backs, Josiah Jackson. He's a six foot one, 175 pound defensive back out of Fairfield High School in Fairfield, Ohio. He's had offers from Duke, Iowa State, Boston College, Indiana, Vanderbilt, and a lot of non Power Five schools. Now he plays cornerback and safety in high school, mostly corner. What I like about him is he plays a lot of man coverage. So he's played a lot of man coverage in high school, including press man coverage. And we all know West Virginia staff has talked about wanting to be be able to play more man coverage so that they can blitz more and get more pressure on the quarterbacks in the Big 12. And I think this young man will allow them to do that. Also, he's long. He's got that six foot one frame, which falls again right into what the staff's been wanting to do. They've been wanting to add more length and more speed to their defense. You know, add that six one frame in with his 4.540 speed. This young man does that. And he's also really good at coming up and stopping the run. The second defensive back on the list is Cameron Calhoun. If you remember, I did a live stream about this young man few weeks ago when we got his commitment. He's a six foot two, 175 pound defensive back out of Winton Woods High School in Cincinnati, Ohio. He had offers from Georgia Tech, Pitt, Duke, Boston College, Purdue, and Kentucky. Now, 24-7 sports actually had him as a 100% lock to Kentucky, but he surprised everybody and committed to West Virginia. The one thing, I, what I really like about this young man is his ball skills. He had nine interceptions his junior year of high school. And not only can he intercept the ball, he knows what to do with it when he gets it. He can go up and get the ball out of the air, win 50-50 balls. I really like this young man and his ability to go get the football. So I feel like he can force some turnovers, hopefully, which is one area our defense has struggled with, at least especially in the 2021 season. He is a, he is kind of small, but I, you know Mike Joseph will get a hold of him. He'll put some weight on him, put some strength on him. So I'm really looking forward to what this young man has to offer. I think this young man has the ability – and the skills to be able to come in and compete for a spot from day one. I really think he's that talented, if he can put some weight on and some strength on. And last but not least on this list is Josiah Trotter. I did a video just on this young man. I'll link to it at the end. But he's a linebacker out of St. Joseph's Prep High School in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He's a six foot two, 230-pound middle linebacker. As a junior in high school, he's already 230. This young man already has a physical size to come in and compete at the college level at the linebacker spot. And, and he'll put me even more weight on him more than likely. Another good thing, six foot two frame. As a six foot two linebacker, he's going to be able to disrupt passing lanes. He's going to be able to tackle easier because he can reach out and grab guys easier with that long with them long arms. I just really like that the this the length that this defensive staff is adding is really impressing me and I really like the direction they're going because in my opinion, if you want to compete in Power 5 football and win conference championships, 
You need to be athletic. You need to be fast. You need to be long. And I think these guys are fitting that mold, even at the linebacker spot. This trotter, to tell you how impressive this young man is, he's had offers from Clemson, Notre Dame, Maryland, Ohio State, Penn State, Oregon, and many other Power 5 schools. Now, he's if you recognize the last name, it's because his dad, Jeremiah Trotter, played for the Philadelphia Eagles as a linebacker. He's actually in the Philadelphia Eagles Hall of Fame. And he has an older brother named Jeremiah Trotter Jr. who's actually playing at Clemson. But what I love about this young man is he had a chance to go to Clemson to play with his brother, but instead he loved what he saw at West Virginia and Coach Neil Brown and his staff, and he wants to be a part of what they're building in Morgantown. And I love that. So we have an NFL legacy player potentially and likely coming to Morgantown in 2023. But the physical tools of this young man is remarkable. I think he'll be able to come in day one and compete for a starting role. I really do. I think he's that good. He has a really high motor to add into that six foot two, 230-pound frame. He's fast. He can go sideline to sideline. He can go downhill. He's good at getting through blocks. I really, really like him. What's, what was the most impressive to me on film is this young man's ability to play in pass coverage. When a running back comes out in, in pass coverage, they're not going to have a big advantage over, over uh, Josiah Trotter. He's going to be able to guard running backs in pass coverage because of his athleticism and his length. And I love that. It's very rare that we've had a, a linebacker that can do that at West Virginia. And I think we're going to have that with Josiah Trotter in 2023. So I love this young man. I think he'll make the two deep at, le- at least in 2023 with potentially to be a starter, especially if Lee Kuba decides to join the, go into the draft after the 2022 season. Well, guys, let me know in the comments section which of these players are you most impressed with so far? How do you like this class so far? Do you like what the positions that they're filling in, the, in, in this class? Me personally, I think they're going out and getting positions of need. Which one of these players do you like the best? Or is there any other comments you want to leave regarding this recruiting class? And where do you think West Virginia will end up? Do you think the 2023 class will end up being even better than the 2022 class? Also, you can check out the BetUS link in the description box to go place your bets on NBA playoffs, Major League Baseball, whatever you want to bet on. Use the promo code JOIN125 to get 125% bonus on your first bet. There's also links to Fanatics. There's links to Amazon. You you can utilize those for your next shopping experience. And there's a new way you can support Kuzis Corner. You can hit the Super Thanks button. It's a heart right underneath the video with a dollar sign in it. Hit that button. Donate whatever you feel like donating. You can make a one-time donation to Kuz's Corner if you want to support me that way. Look at it this way. I serve up college football content to you. You can tip your server. Look at that as a tip. You can tip Kuz's Corner that way. If you don't want to do any of that and you want to support me for free, you can hit the red subscribe button. Give me the thumbs up button. Leave a comment. Share this with your friends. All of that helps me out as well. I really appreciate you tuning into this video. And until next time, you country roads.